Hey everybody, welcome to November 24th, 2017. Uh, we're taking a look at the news of the week and things that I've been working on. Um, we're also using uh, issue 125 of Too Long Didn't Read, uh, my newsletter about teaching, learning, and tech. Uh, focus on making you the expert in education, technology, literacy, um, and, and really try to unpack what's been happening. Uh, this has been Thanksgiving week here in the U.S., um, but it's also been a really, really busy week in terms of technology, so let's dig into it. So a couple different things. One, I had two posts that I sent out, one on uh, cognitive dissonance and keeping two ideas in your head at once, and then the other about emotion and education and how we really need to have a little bit of emotion in teaching and learning so that people will remember. Moving into the, the video that I share in the watch category, I shared a piece um, from a TED Ed lesson looking at the tragedy of the commons. Um, and it's basically tragedy of the commons is looking at when we make decisions about resources and how, you know, the, 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 the positives and the negatives that exist as one individual, um, you know, thinks about their consumption over the benefits of, of the well-being of society in general. Um, so a, a really good way to think with our students about um, their needs and then also larger societal needs and, and usage. Um, a, a very important element as we dig into uh, this week. So I start everything off with a post um, and this is basically from I think f uh, a couple of years ago looking at the start of net neutrality and it was a nice piece by the, by, uh, the oatmeal talking about okay well you know, what is net neutrality? Because there's a lot of um, people that didn't understand net neutrality. Um, and as I say down here, um, Tim Wu coined network neutrality in his piece. And for my part, like, I think that it's just a really bad label. There's times in life where we have bad labels for things that sort of stick. I think that net neutrality or network neutrality, like, yeah, it definitely fits. But for like normal people out there that should think about this stuff and worry about this stuff, but they don't, I think that it's a problematic term because it's just confusing. It doesn't make any sense. We need something um, more interesting or sexier that gets people interested in, in thinking about net neutrality um, and understanding why it's, it's a problem. Um, because there's a lot of disinformation, and as you read this section here, um, there's a lot of, like, I guess, lies or cover-up from the FCC about what's happening with, with net neutrality. So if you've been paying attention to this space, and especially to Too Long Didn't Read for a while, um, you realize that we've been talking about net neutrality for pretty much as long as uh, Too Long Didn't Read has been, uh, you know, as long as I've been writing it. And so... Previously, I, I urged all of you to get out there and make statements and comments about net neutrality. Um, I added my own comments and phone calls and statements. Um, and one of the things that we've noticed is that we, uh, for the most part, the FCC ignored a lot of those comments before. Um, they, they chose to ignore or hide a lot of those. They, um, if we didn't make a serious legal argument or um, as down here in this uh, piece do, 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 here six easy ways to make your voice heard like a lot of those they'll give you a script so that when you make the phone call you sort of know what to say because people sometimes feel um, like they don't know what to say or do when they hop on that phone call or, or they leave a comment so it gives you a good script well the FCC decided well we're either going to ignore those at the script because we think they're redundant or if you don't have a legal argument we'll ignore you as well well, that's not really how democracy works. Um, and at the same time, what we found out is that a lot of those um, comments on the other side might just be um, hacks or fakes or dummies or viruses or bots, um, but they're, they're bogus as well. Um, so there's a lot of interesting research where people are unpacking what's real and what's fake in it. Um, and for the most part, uh, the general consensus is people want net neutrality. They want to keep the rules as they are, and we, we really do need better rules. Um, but it's, it's a hard subject. It's a hard thing to talk about, but it's terribly important. So the, the takeaway from this area, one, is I hope that you go through and read this section and really unpack net neutrality. Uh, I think I'm just going to take this whole section and turn it into a blog post to give it a little bit more focus. Um, but it's important to make sense of this 
But the reason why I'm talking about it all again is the FCC is having an open comment period now and they will have a vote, um, I think, December 12th. And so if you're in the U.S., I urge you to get out there and add uh, your voice to the commenting period online. If you run a website or you have an online space, I'd urge you to get you know your voice out there and, and take a stand and basically make your voice heard as well. Um, this is something that's terribly important. Um, and what we see is the FCC is basically helping big business, you know, helping the telecoms, helping Verizon, Comcast, AT&T and others um, create a monopoly. And so we don't need that, especially those of us that are fans of the free and open web, which I'm basically guessing if you're a reader of too long, didn't read that sort of fits in your wheelhouse. This by itself was a big story. Normally in Too Long Didn't Read, I would make, I would unpack these elements over the course of Too Long Didn't Read, but there was too much happening this week. On to Uber. And so one of the interesting things was over the summer we moved and a friend of mine helped uh, pack materials and, and I basically got him to my house, the new house, and then when I was ready to go home, I paid for an Uber to send him back uh, downtown to his apartment. And a couple weeks later, one of the interesting things was that I was getting emails saying that my password was changed. And it wasn't my password for Uber, it was his. And so I, I basically pulled him in my office and I said, look, something's going on here. You need to check this out. Um, and then when we would log into Uber to change his password, his, um, you know, his home or his language on it was set to someplace in the Ukraine. And so I'm like, uh, something's wrong here. Uh, but we didn't quite know what it was. So uh, what we did was we went in. Uh, I deleted Uber from my phone. The app, I deleted my account. I suggested that he delete his account to protect himself or at least keep an eye on his credit cards to see what was happening. Um, and now, lo and behold, we find out that Uber was hacked. Uh, they were hacked. They didn't tell anybody about it. They kept everything quiet. Uh, and they paid the ransom to keep the hackers, uh, keep it quiet. Um, that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. We shouldn't accept these from our companies. If we trust you with our data, trust you with their information, one of the things that we should require in all of this is transparency. So if something happens, something goes wrong, look, you're going to get hacked. You're going to get hacked. It's going to happen. Um, if things happen, when things happen, when you get hacked, um, be open, be transparent. Say, hey, we got hacked. We know we're sorry. Um, if we lose customers because of it, okay, we lose customers because of it, but I'm, I'm, I think that most customers will value the honesty and the transparency. Say so we got hacked. You can even say we don't fully know what happened. You can say we don't know the full ramifications of this or the extent of the hack, but you should get out in front of it and say to your users, look, we got hacked. Change your passwords. Be aware. Be aware of what's happening. Not what we've seen from several companies lately, not what we saw from Uber, not what we saw with um, Experian or Expedia or whatever that the, the um, credit reporting agency is, not what we saw from Yahoo. We need to expect that these companies value us and value our data as much as we do. Um, so we need transparency. We need honesty from these companies. And anything less than that is not acceptable. Um, and so there's a lot of other reasons why. Uh, especially with Uber, but for these reasons, especially as I'm heading out for conferences and I let, know a lot of my colleagues are, delete Uber. It's time to get rid of them. Um, this is not acceptable. They keep playing fast and loose. Um, yes, there are other companies doing this. Um, you know, we repeatedly complain about Facebook here and others about and and Twitter and the way they're playing fast and loose with our data. But some of this stuff is just not acceptable, and and users need to. Um, make it known that it's not acceptable. So I have made a choice to delete Uber, and I would suggest others do so as well. Um, really interesting piece about education and the education level uh, or areas or focus of our tech elite. Um, and so what it's thinking about is, you know, we have a lot of really smart people that are uh, developing these online spaces, but there's a lack of diversity in the room. There's a lack of other voices or other perspectives in the room. So we have a lot of people that are developing these environments, um, these learning or socializing or communication tools and spaces. And 
uh, there, there really, really is not an understanding of like philosophy and the humanities and, and typical human nature. There is a belief that, hey, we can, you know, there, there's wet code and there's dry code. The dry code is the very simple, for the most part, algorithms that run these spaces. And the wet code is the, um, the human nature side of stuff. And so they're, they're organizing stuff, uh, for, code like what is normal and what's logical when human beings for the most part are not normal and logical and so i think you know what we saw with the the recent political elections and the hacks and the propaganda and the disinformation and misinformation is there's a lot of bad people out there that have taken a look at this and leveraged it for their own purposes and it was a fertile feeding ground for that and so one of the things that this great piece is looking at is um you know maybe our, our 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 developers and our coders and our founders need to have a a stronger educational background to realize what human nature really is like. Um, and so, really interesting thing, uh, a series of pieces to to read and think about. Um, you know, as we think about teaching and learning and what value higher ed has in our lives and in the lives of our future kids. Uh, interesting research uh, results from the PISA from the OECD. Um, this latest round was from 2015, and they're looking at these results that I shared looked at collaborative problem solving. Um, I find that this is especially the collaborative problem solving. I think it's interesting to go through and look at um, not just the results, but also it's important to go in and take a look at um, the activities at the assessment and what we're having students do on the PISA. Um, for the most part, I think it, it's pretty close to representing like a real online learning environment and having kids uh, really interact and, and learn and read and write uh, and communicate in these spaces. So I really value a lot of the, the assessments that are included in or the activities included in the PISA. Um, so take some time to dig in. You can look at your country and see what the results suggest, but then also dig into the results and look at the actual assessment. Um, for my value, for my money and my time, that's the most important stuff to take a look at. Um, one of the last things that I shared in the reading section was Mozilla had a couple of announcements this week that they were folding the web literacy work. Obviously, I've been involved in the web literacy work since the beginning. Um, you know, and, and I've seen that this has slowly been in the decline since Doug left and others left um, from the work. I helped work with the Web Literacy Initiative and those uh, individuals on it uh, as they helped move it to like version 2.0 and others. Um, and, you know, I had a piece uh, recently this past summer talking about probably the best thing for the Web Literacy work is for Mozilla to get rid of it. Um, and the, the community really to take it over. My dream is, well, first off, uh, when Mozilla announced this week that they were getting rid of it, I was a bit upset, a little bit bummed out. Um, but you know what my dream really is, as Doug Belshaw talks about in this post here, my dream is that, you know, that this becomes like the coral reef where other things can grow and blossom. Um, and so one of the things I've always been interested in doing is setting up like an open wiki where we can document the history of the Web Literacy Initiative um, and what it means and, and what the future could and should look like in these spaces. Um, so it's for me, it was very this news was important. It was also a little bit disheartening. But at the same time, like it, this is something that was a long time coming. I think that they really took their hands off the wheel. Um, it does make me have larger questions about Mozilla and other organizations, how they'll start up an initiative and they'll sort of like really get gangbusters behind it. They'll have a lot of announcements and then all of a sudden, um, it'll just die off. Um, and, and I've been wondering about that for the last two years, three years. There's a lot of things that get a lot of like hype and then they just die off. Um, and sometimes there is a blog post and announcements and emails saying, Hey, we're switching directions. And other times there's nothing, nothing at all. And I don't get it. Um, but, you know, it just makes me think more about um, the, the work of the individual as opposed to the collective. Um, interesting research, uh, a meta-analysis on coffee consumption. Uh, for those of us that are coffee fiends out there, um, once again, this doesn't mean that you should get out and start drinking three cups a day. But for those of us that 
start off the day with two cups of coffee and then we start to feel bad when we head into that third or fourth cup of the day, um, it makes us a little bit less apprehensive about it. Um, but I think it's all about balance, of course. So it's interesting to think at, to look at the risks that they pull out and the different factors they pull out in the research, in the meta analysis to figure out what all of this means. Um, and then uh, to, to end the, up the week, uh, a good quote from Martin Luther King Jr. thinking about advocacy and activism and getting out there and making yourself heard and making a difference in the world. Um, so once again, this is Too Long Didn't Read 125, um, sharing this out on November 24th, 2017, end of Thanksgiving week here in the U.S., um, all of these materials and then some are available up on my website. These videos are up on the website as well. If you haven't accessed it, you can visit my blog there and see my posts. You can subscribe to the newsletter to Too Long Didn't Read if you don't already. Um, and at the same time, I'm spending some time this week uh, trying to figure out a better way to have the archives of my newsletter show up on this website um, so I can link back to the pages and people can mark up and annotate um, in Hypothesis the, the newsletter. So I'm working on that, um, and it's a little bit of a challenge because I'm running into some old plugins that don't want to play well. Um, but to wrap it all up, hopefully this is of value to you. If you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to the newsletter. If you haven't already, um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, leave some comments below if this is of value to you. And thanks again. Have a great rest of your week.